Welcome to another unit in business mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about perpetuities. Well, perpetuities, that's just an extension to what we already discussed with annuities. Slightly different perspective, but in the end works out in the same way. An annuity means I get an infinitely long payment. So instead of having a fixed length of payments occurring, here in this case, it's about an infinitely long payment plan. Usually also it's not about saving, because if I save up money for an infinitely long period of time, I will end up with a final value, so to speak, of infinity. So it only makes sense to consider this from the other perspective, the other way around. So meaning I already have saved some money and could ask the question, how much is the rate I could get out of this? Or, and that's a more common perspective, I want to know how much money I need so that I will get a certain rate for an indefinite period of time. So, for example, I want to start my pension. I expect to be immortal. I want to get each month 1000 euros. So how much money would I need to have today so I, that I can actually realize this plan of getting 1000 euros each month or 12,000 each year? That's the idea behind perpetuities. So that's again what I said here before. And again, we have two perspectives, the due perspective and the immediate perspective. In the due perspective, here the actual formula for this. So the first payment happens by the end of the first period is that the money I need to have, so the initial stock of capital R0 needs to be the rate divided by the interest rate. So in other words, what this means, if I multiply this with I, I see that the rate actually is the same thing as the interest paid on my investment. So what I do here is basically, I always get my interest payment, take the interest payment out of the savings account. So the capital in the savings account remains the same. Next period, again, I get the same amount of interest. I take out the interest, capital stock remains the same. This can, however, only work if I give the capital the potential for the first period to actually generate interest. If I take out the first payment directly at the beginning of the first period, I need to have a slightly higher initial um, capital stock. And that's why the formula for the perpetuity immediate looks slightly different or rather is multiplied with one plus I. So why it is slightly larger than the perpetuity due because I need to consider that I need to have this first interest payment as well. So the capital stock decreases by the first payment and only then does it start generating new interest. And then the procedure is the same as before. So the difference here again is do I multiply with one plus I or don't I? Else, well, this is the idea of simply getting the value today. Well, I can do the same thing if I just turn this around, solve for R. So saying I have a certain amount of money. How much can I get each period if my interest rate is so and so? I'm just solving for R. Let's do a quick example. Here we have at the end of each year, Mr. Huber would like to withdraw the amount of 50,000 euros from his account without reducing the originally invested capital. Which amount does Mr. Huber have to deposit today if his bank guarantees an interest rate of 5% due 
during the whole duration. Well, first off, we can remark that he withdraws this at the end of each year. So it's about an immediate payment plan. And he does not want to reduce the originally invested capital, so it's about a perpetuity. So here we have to work with the formula for perpetuity immediate. Then we also have the amount he wants to withdraw each year, and we have the interest rate. So we can apply the formula for the perpetuity immediate, which simply is the rate he wants to get paid, like the 50,000 euros, divided by the interest rate, here the 5%. And this gives 1 million, so he basically has to deposit 1 million today so that he can assure his payment of 50,000 each year. And that's basically all there is to this exercise. So at this point, we're at the end of this session. So I say goodbye and see you next time.